Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton. My heart is a high-speed CPU, what's your excuse? And today it is time for episode 20... 28? Probably 28 of my Let's Play of Paradise Killer, in which we have uncovered many tantalizing secrets of this island, but not really come to any conclusions about what they may mean. And we're going to do a couple things today. First, we're going to finish exploring the roof of the council building, which may or may not lead to further secrets uncovered. <laughs> we're also going to uh, go talk, or at least start talking, to Grace Bloodlines, aka One Last Kiss, who may or may not be a ghost. Um, and if she is a ghost, implies that even the ghosts of the upper class of this society get a better deal than the ghosts of the... Uh, Lower class, so I suppose even death here is not the great equalizer. As you may or may not hear, my throat is all fucked up. This is because I my throat is always fucked up nowadays. And I simply have to deal with it, and there's not really anything I can do about it. But also, if I remember, I'm gonna go pick the nose of this giant statue, which has what I believe may be a whiskey bottle perching in it. I do love how jazzy this tune is. I've talked I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into this again because I've really beat that dead horse with enough of a stick at this point, but this game really, really has a more of a synthwave vibe than a vaporwave vibe. Supposedly it's a love letter to vaporwave, but almost all of its influences and reference are those of Vaporwave longing for a lost, idealized, 1980s wholesome... Well, no, not wholesome, that's not the right word, but wholehearted and unironic... I I indulgence of its visual and auditory tropes and aesthetics. The noise up here is going to drive me insane. Uh, but it doesn't have the, the sort of, like, bitter, vicious acceptance of... Yeah, I'm drifting. This isn't. This is not unnecessary. I've gone into this plenty in the past. The Way of Blood Bar, Twenty Fifth Island Sequence. I like the crows. Me too. They're comforting. I heard once that in the real world, someone made a video game where, when you shoot a crow, they sometimes give you a grenade. Wow, deep cut. Why are you talking to a citizen? I'm in charge of the abductions. But you shouldn't be talking to them, it messes with the integration. Don't patronise me. I run the abductions, you think I don't know that? You have no respect for me. You need to think about how you speak to people. I still don't know why finding glugs of whiskey lying around the world allows me a glimpse into the next paradise sequence. Um, but it's nice that they're there. Incidentally, if you want to play a game that has kind of a much stronger artistic validity, especially in the way it sort of drifts between times and places, go play Kentucky Route Zero. Genuinely one of the top artsy games of all time. Um, fundamentally completely different to this. Uh, in many respects, most prominently the fact that that's actually good art that's actually saying the things it's trying to say. Anyway, grinning helper. A light-coloured whiskey often served with ice and bar snacks. A good drink to relax with on a summer's evening. The dusk of a summer's evening is the most wonderful thing in the world. You know, I don't agree with a lot of these, but that one I will wholeheartedly accept. Alright buddy, what's up? This is it! The council building! Where the bad shit went down! Can you feel it, love ties? The afterglow of murder? Of mass murder? Man, I'm getting hard! It stinks of crime. It's repulsive. What went on in there? Who did what to who? Should be whom, Shinji. How did the killer get in? There isn't an entrance on this roof. Some big investigating to do, huh? Enjoy! <laughs> well, I mean, we already found a back door. Uh, lower down in the structure. And these, I assume, are going to be tire tracks from Lydia's magic car, proving that she is up to her tits in this terrible eventuality. Just as much as uh, Aikiko, I suppose. Tire marks. 
These must be from Lydia. She's the only one on the island with a car. What's she doing on the roof of the penthouse? Again, one of the things that really bothers me about the investigatorial technique as presented in this game is that Lady Love dies makes a shit ton of conjectures. The fact that... Okay, there is only one car on the island and that car belongs to Lydia. That does not necessarily mean that Lydia was the person piloting the car when it touched down here. Also, what if there's a secret hidden car that you weren't aware of? Perhaps there is a car only available to the guy in charge of the council. You know, perks of the uh, of the role, a secret car. Um, you know, there's any other number of reasons why this could be here. I get that the game has to try and limit our, our wild speculation to some extent. The game kind of has to, to a degree, say, here's what this fact means because our scenario cannot account for all eventualities because it is a work of fiction that was created singly rather than being a true organic world that can react to the things you do or to the things that were done within it in the past. But, um, it really, it really boils my piss to just see stuff stated as meaning incontrovertibly X when it could also just as easily mean Y or Z. Um, and that's one of the big flaws in the game for me. It ties into this kind of like weird incontrovertibility of the of very obviously flawed systems, which itself could tie into the greater themes. After all, this is supposedly a game about how and why capitalism bad. Um, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use these things so that I'm not just standing around rambling for forever, so we can actually move on a bit. But I'll come back to that. To the Heart by Apoc. A love song played to the city. Cities are worth falling in love with. There's nothing else like them. A hot night in the city is a wonderful affair. Again, one I actually agree with. That's uh, unusual, two in a row. This is repelling gear. I don't know, it seems, uh, seems perfectly appealing to me. <laughs> Was someone trying to breach the building from up here? Maybe it could get you in behind the guards. Well, now we know how they got to the broken gate. So it seems like Lydia definitely is. I mean, we found a space helmet that smells like her. We found, now we've got her car on the roof and a repelling pin leading straight down to, presumably, where we found that stuff previously. And oh, look, I missed something ages ago. Interesting. I don't think there's anything else up here. I do want to see if it's possible to get up to the main rooftop, so I'll try that now. Well, not the main rooftop, but the upper rooftop. Anyway. There is this recurring thing in this game that really irritates me. Which is that... Um, the game will present an, a game abstraction. Which is very common in video games as a medium. Because a game is a simulation of reality, not reality. It cannot... It does not have the kind of physical, natural laws that allow it to react to any eventuality. If you prod the machine, it can only react in ways which the developers anticipated you might prod it, prod it and therefore programmed a response. Um, therefore, it's very necessary to limit the kind of scope and stuff. And I said in one of the earliest episodes, okay, this sequence here is the game telling you any information that you receive and put into your computer is incontrovertible truth. It just is the fabric of the the metaphysical fabric of the island itself allows only this this kind of truth to exist in these particular ways and places therefore if you rip information out of a nightmare computer the information on that computer is true even if your interpretation of it may be flawed and i'm like fair enough but we've seen several systems that we've been told are absolutely infallible have extremely glaringly obvious holes in them. We were told early on, you can always trust that if a nightmare computer tells you a person accessed it, uh, or the machine to which it is attached, that person did so because they have a blood vial and that only one, there is only one blood vial for each member of the syndicate. Therefore, if you see a particular syndicate member's blood vial accessed a point, that syndicate member must have done it. But what we now know is that it's entirely possible to get blood vials from people's graves, which means that those blood vials can be detached in some way. Which means that anybody... Uh, actually, I'm glad I know what this this cable was. When we came here in, like, episode three, we found the cable. 
dangling down here, and I completely forgot about it ever since. But um, it's clear that not only Lady Love dies, Lady Love dies is not the only person able to access a nightmare computer. Like, the plot is predicated on the ability of other people to do that. And if accessing a nightmare computer is all it takes to get a dead person's blood vial, oh fuck. All it takes to get a dead person's blood vial, then surely that means that blood vials are in no way incontrovertible. I'll have to go all the way back. Oh shit. <laughs> I forgot if you fall in the water, you die. Now where the fuck am I? I'm inside. Okay. Oh, it's just occurred to me. There was a save point I never picked up. Anyway, um, we'll come back around to that in a bit. Carefully step over the viscera. And uh, what the fuck was I saying? Yeah, so blood vials. We got what we got one, two out of graves. Therefore, blood vials can be obtained and therefore used by other people. Two, nightmare computers can be accessed by other people because we know that Lydia must have accessed the nightmare computer on the beach. And we know that a bunch of nightmare computers just serve standard administrative functions in this society, so they must be accessible. You know, a um, a locked grate on a rooftop accessible only by someone who has been exiled from that society doesn't make any damn sense. Um, or even, I believe, Aikiko's... Oh ho! The penthouse? Did I finally find a way into the penthouse? Are you kidding me? Neat. Okay, I'm going to come back to this after I look at the thing I wanted to look at, because otherwise I will forget with my incredibly scattered scatterbrain. I think that means I might need to climb all the way back up, so we'll be right back. Oh, let's just grab this starlight skin in passing so I don't forget again. Symbols of an architect. What does perfection look like? Will we ever know? Can we even comprehend it? Well, I think we both know what perfection looks like, and it's me, darlings. Observe, as I am objectively correct about all hot takes of every video game I've ever played. Uh, you're welcome that I do such a lovely service in sharing it with you all. And, uh, hey, you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> if you want, if, uh, if you want to kick me a little something something for what I do, I have a Patreon and a Ko-fi, both of which you- or either of which you could donate to. There's also a Discord where I organise streams and stuff, uh, or you can just hang out with me on the internet. And um, yeah, check out all that stuff in the description under every single episode of everything I ever post on this channel. Uh, I'm going to continue posting these videos as my health allows for forever, basically. Um, but. You know what? I'm incredibly poor. I'm somewhat disabled. And if you give me a little bit of a leeway in my in my incomes, it makes my life so much easier and safer, and I massively appreciate whenever such a thing is done. All right, shilling over. No more begging. All done. That happens like once every seven episodes or eight episodes or something. It's all done. It's fine. Let's find out what we have discovered here. This knife is inscribed with always yours, Sammy baby. It must belong to Lydia. Well, goddamn. There's no blood on it. Probably washed away in the last high tide. The blade is damaged, though. It has nicks along it. Shame, this was a knife nice once. The damaged grate is on the balcony right above here. Was this knife used to open it? Well, it seems like in the space of two episodes, we've discovered an absolute shit ton of damning, damning evidence against Lydia. Uh, which brings me back to my former belief that this was absolutely a big old conspiracy. So the Daybreaks broke in and broke the seals. And uh, Doom Jazz and uh, uh, Aikiko have clearly, in some way, worked together to release poor Mr. Division onto the world so that he could run off and slaughter people. Island sequence 004. We understand. Communing with the gods lets the alien devils in. They rot our islands and condemn us to failure. We must never speak to them. 
Some do not obey the law. Weird. So that's something that they didn't even know bef like before they created this external pocket reality. Anyway, um, let's head back up. So I was talking earlier in this episode about the problem of the game telling me, the player, this is a game abstraction, this information is trustworthy and true, and therefore the characters will state it in such a way. But then to have within the game world those, those things just be patently un, untrue or false or falsifiable or bypassable, it really bothers me because I don't know who to believe. I don't know whether I should be thinking in terms of these systems being fallible and breakable, or whether I should accept that as truth and it's just a plot hole. Um, and I think it's a flaw in the game that it doesn't make that clear. I think you could make a game where that ambiguity is a fun part of the plot. And indeed, many games have plots that involve something being something about the world being incontrovertibly true in some way and then having that rug pulled out from underneath you and perhaps even discovering that early by experimenting with that simulated world's physical physical laws. Um, but that, that does not seem to be what is happening here. Anyway, let's have a look in here, which I really hope is the penthouse. This is Ais Kiwami's apartment. The bio in Starlight for him says that he took his own life. Unheard of for a council member. Was he hiding something? Huh. Sure is minimalism up in here. Very, very different to the style of pretty much everywhere else in the game. I don't see any religious accoutrement in his, in his flat. In fact, I have a sneaking suspicion this is just a scanned photo of someone's real, real flat. <laughs> Or maybe one from, like, a property listings website. Birth records. There are records of two births. The names are redacted. The births occurred a couple of years apart. The first one was 27 years ago. Who do we know who... Who do we know who was born 27 years ago? What are tampered birth records doing in the, the apartment of a council member that took his own life? If I didn't know any better, I'd say this is a big stinking clue about something. There's two of them. Who tampered with them? Whose children were being hidden? Huh, very curious. Let's have a quick look. So that was Ais Kiwami, about whom we know almost nothing. We don't know what his deal was. We don't know what he did in this society. He just committed suicide at some point. How old is... Oh wait, no, 27. Okay, so he was born to Rena Division 27 years ago and his father is unknown. So... The only other instance of 27 years is what we just discovered, so it sounds like Henry Division had a sibling. And considering that information was in Ais Kiwami's flat, it's reasonable conjecture. Obviously would need more evidence to say it, say it's like likely concrete, but I think a reasonable conjecture right now is Ais Kiwami discovers that Henry Division is his son, maybe? Um and commit suicide. But that leaves the question of who the sister is. Perhaps one of the syndicate members. Since that would be really interesting and definitely scandalous to this society if if two siblings, one was a citizen who are basically serfs in this society and have zero rights whatsoever and one was a member of the syndicate. Since it seems like there's very little transition. In fact, it might be illegal uh, to change your class status between these two levels. So, that's very interesting, and I'm... Uh, uh, Rick... I mean, Grace Bloodlines was the other murder victim from Henry, supposedly. And his mother was Rena Division, but we don't have we don't have a marker for Rena Division or any information on Rena Division, but I think that's... I'm going to conclude that for now. Ais Kiwami probably committed suicide either because he discovered or because the guilt got to him or something like that regarding Henry Division, either because he was horrified to discover that he had birthed uh, a vicious murderer who killed a bunch of people, or two people, I guess, <clears throat> or because he was ashamed of the, the way he had treated his son now that he's discovered this is in fact his son, which is a very human way of running your logic that doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but based on my experience with humans, that's how, how you guys tend to think. So... 
you know, it didn't matter when he was just a citizen, but this is his son. Suddenly it matters retro retroactively. Anyway, I think that's all of the information we're going to gather here for now. So I'm going to zip back up and make sure that I remember to uh, pick the nose of the giant statue. Climbing across this crystal stuff makes the worst goddamn noise. I really hate it. Uh oh. Ah, beans. Oh well. Down we go. <laughs> Alright, let's try that again. Maybe I can try and reach it from up here instead. Or maybe I should try and reach it from down there, that might be more sensible. Anyway, here goes nothing. Ooh, I think that's a screensaver. Or a starlight skin, rather. Silent Watchers. So many tragedies occur in apartment blocks. Tragedies both small and world changing. The aircon units see them all but never speak. Well sure, I'm gonna factor that into my uh personal belief system. Why not? That seems pretty uh pretty reasonable. Anyway, so that's gonna be it from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. Join me again for more wild conjecture about uh, exactly what the fuck happened in this terrible place. And possibly also going and talking to one last kiss and getting the lowdown from her and then it will be pretty much the roundup i'm just gonna go check out like one or two final tiny locations talk to everybody again get the phone records and then it'll probably be time for the grand grand tribunal whatever they want to call it uh and we'll take this to trial anyway what the fuck That was kind of abrupt. Anyway, thank you for watching. That's all from me for today. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, and share. I also stream on Twitch, and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.